Hey everybody, welcome back to Entertaining the Thought. Um, I decided to do a little vlog tonight because I just finished watching about three hours ago uh, the final episode of Do Ra Ra Ra. Now, just uh, two quick notes. Firstly, I haven't seen uh, the bonus episodes, episode 12 and a half and episode 25. Um, technically, I guess they're canon, and uh, I guess they wrap up storylines uh, more, but... Um, I just want my impressions to be of just the 24 episodes of Do Ra Ra Ra, and that's it. And uh, secondly, um, I don't know 100% if I am, but there's a chance that I will go into spoilers. So if you hear anything that sounds like it'll spoil, uh, ba uh, not ba uh, that'll spoil Do Ra 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 for you, um, then just uh, just be warned. It's probably going to if it sounds like a spoiler. So, uh, with that said, um, I just joined MyAnimeList.net about a week ago, and uh, I was browsing the forums and seeing uh, the reactions to the final episode of Do Ra Ra Ra, and I found out that uh, there are a lot of people who like the episode, but also a fair number of people who did not like the episode that much, and I guess the catalyst to this was uh, a person that I kind of sort of work for, um... She's a video uploader on thatguywiththeglasses.com. Her name is Yezu Otaku. And uh, I kind of sort of work for her because uh, she is doing this project right now where she adapts the Fruits Basket manga into a radio drama uh, because uh, she has some issues with how it was changed in the anime. You could see it in her review. And um, I auditioned and I got cast as one of the extras. So my roles are usually like a paper boy, delivery guy, uh, teacher, student, stuff like that. And um, I'm not one of the big roles like Yuki, but in a way I kind of like being an extra a little bit more because every time I get a script, I get to do new roles, I get to do new voices, stuff like that. So stuff like that's really fun, but I digress. You can watch it at... Uh, this address that I just put at the bottom right there. Ooh, magic. Look at that text. Anyway, um, so I follow uh, her on Twitter, and she tweeted that she could not stand the last episode of Do Ra Ra Ra. It, like, lowered her opinion of the entire series. And um, she even tweeted, like, guys, tell me what you think about Do Ra Ra Ra, because uh, I want, like, fan responses. So, um, I guess this is part of that. Also, um, I guess the other main part is um, the fact that I really, really, really love Do Ra Ra Ra. Like, I thought it was fucking great. Like, um, like I love uh, Bacchano. And I didn't expect to like this more than Bacchano, but it actually, it, it did surpass Bacchano for me. And the reason why I compare it to Bacchano, for those who haven't seen Do Ra 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 or Bacchano, is that um, the same, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the reason why, uh, the same writers and directors uh, worked on Bacchano, also work on Do Ra Ra Ra, and um, it's also put out by Anaplex, and um, they actually take place in the same universe. In fact, in episode 11, around the 12 minute mark, you could, uh, there is a cameo by uh, Isaac and Miria from Bacchano. Um, kinda don't wanna get into that because I watched the dub of Do Ra 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 and I also watched the dub of Bacchano and they didn't get Caitlin Glass and J. Michael Tatum for Isaac and Miria. And so the new voice actors, I'm pretty sure, never saw Bacchano, or else they probably wouldn't have turned in the performances that they did. But, um, I digress. Uh, but, yeah, that's the reason why I'm comparing it to Bacchano, and I love Bacchano. I think it's well-directed, well-animated, uh, the voice cast was stellar, and I love the music in Bacchano. So I didn't expect to like it more than Bacchano, but actually, I really did. I thought it, um, I think what I what pushed it over for me was the fact that it was pretty much on par with Bacchano, but what pushed it up just kind of like, if, if Bacchano is like uh, here, then like Durarara would be about here. And uh, I would say that's because um, I like the characters more. I mean, I love Isaac and Miria from, uh, from Bacchano. I think they're great, but um, like people like Celti, Henri, uh, I'm blanking on 
in his name right now. I'm sorry. But uh, whoever Johnny Young Bosch played, uh, Dota Cheen, um, and uh, crap, what is his name? Mita. Mika? I forget his name. Blonde kid with white hoodie. Um, I'm going to remember his name sooner or later. Uh, sorry, I'm bad with names sometimes. Anyway, um, all those characters I really, really loved. And um, I actually liked more characters in Durarara than in Bakano, and I think that's why uh, I liked uh, Durarara more than Bakano, because, like, out of, in Bakano, I liked uh, certain characters, like, maybe three or four. In this one, I liked almost the entire ensemble cast. Like, there were a few people that I thought were kind of, eh, but, like, just in general, like, I loved the cast of uh, Durarara. I loved the characters of Durarara. And so I think that's what pushed it over the edge for me to make me like it more than Bacano. And um, I guess the reason people complain about the last episode of the show is um, a lot of people re uh, is pretty much almost the same reason why a lot of people complain about the ending into one of my other favorite shows, which is uh, Lost. And I actually see a lot of similarities in what I like about Lost and what I like about Durarara, and a lot of similarities to what people hated about the ending of Lost and what people hated about the ending of Durarara. See, I love the characters in Lost. I spent, uh, let's see, if I started watching it, I spent five years uh, loving the characters of Lost and getting to know them, and uh, so much so that the ending gave everyone an ending but didn't didn't really uh solve all of the major plot lines but that was okay with me because i really like the characters and the characters got to do a lot in that finale so that's the reason why i liked it and that's also the reason why i like durarara is because everybody got to do something i mean like it it like durarara starts off with like let's see um I would say there's about eight episodes, eight to ten episodes, where something, uh, where it focuses on a different main character every single episode. And that goes on for about eight to ten episodes. And so, clearly, like, with that, then somebody has to, everybody has to get their own plot line. So, um, like, Selty got her own plot line about how she was the headless rider and how she was in Ireland and came to Japan. Um, uh, D Dota Chin got his own. Uh, Shizuo got his own. Everybody got their own. And so, uh, with that, you're introducing backstory. And so, with that backstory, there's obviously a motivation for the character. And so, that character is going to be taken on a journey. And like i would about say, i would say about maybe eight um maybe about 8 to 10 episodes from the end maybe actually a little less maybe about 7 or 6 um they start to get into what's going to be the plot for the rest of the series so like uh you get the backstories and uh the journeys of these different characters and then it actually just stops and then it becomes the uh, plot line for the three main characters. Even though it is an ensemble cast, there are three main characters, which are Henri and the two boys whose name I can't remember right now. This is really bad. I'm sorry. Um, but um shows how connected I was to the show. I don't know. I love the show, but for some reason I'm really bad with names. Um, I don't know why. Masaomi. Masaomi was the blonde kid. And I forget black-haired kid. He was the leader of the dollars. I don't fucking know his name. I completely forgot it. This is bad because he's pretty much the main character of the show, so I can't believe I don't remember it. But, oh well. Anyway. Um, what? Uh, anyway, uh, so the plot of the series starts uh, in the last six or seven episodes to just focus on those three characters. Um, so, uh, it, it takes, and it starts to be about, uh, a gang war between the yellow scars and the dollars. And so, um, 
everybody's like uh everybody's like pitching in to help uh like uh combat like uh the yellow scarves who are technically the evil group even though one of the three is actually part of the yellow scarves and um and uh like uh that's pretty much the plot of the end of the series and so, like, they kind of forget about Selty trying to get her head back. They forget about Shizu and his brother. And they forget about all this stuff, and they just tend to focus on that. And I think that's where a lot of people got really angry, because, like, well, what the fuck? We spent whole episodes, like, two, not even whole episodes, two or three episodes concerned just about this shit, and now you're just going to abandon it and go with that? And... Like, in some cases, I agree, because, like, you know, I, th like, to be quite honest, I don't, like, with the way, with the direction that they took the series later, uh, I don't think they should have built up, like, Selty that much. I think they should have had, like, a character where they, uh, an episode where they introduce her, but, and, like, maybe, like, that, but, like, that's, sh that shit with, like, oh, I see somebody in her head, and her looks like my head, and oh, this person has my head, and this girl got facial reconstructive surgery, like, like, that was, uh, and, like, it, it, like, didn't really contribute to the main plot, and if this was the direction that they were gonna go, and they weren't going to go the, and they weren't gonna finish the direction with Selty, then I say, yes, I don't think they should've, uh, I don't think they should've, um, ended it like that, and so, in some respects, I disagree with that, but, a lot of people said that, like, this plot comes out of nowhere and uh, just starts escalating. But, like, to me, it felt like they built it up enough. And they had enough episodes in order to make it, uh, like, very emo very high emotional stakes. And what I really liked about it was that even though they abandoned their plot lines, everybody had something to do. Selty had something to do, so did Shizuo, so did uh, Dodachin. Uh, and his little van gang, uh, everybody got to do something. And so um, that I really like, because I think Durarara's strongest um, attribute was its characters. So that's what I felt, uh, that's what I felt was satisfying about the finale. Maybe not the fact that they didn't solve every, every plot line. And this is how I felt about Lost, too. Um, they didn't solve every plot line. Like, they fucking abandoned the Dharma Initiative. They fucking abandoned Walt. They abandoned uh, a bunch of things. But I didn't really feel cheated with the Lost Finale because I got to see the resolution for these characters. Now, maybe you can argue that, uh, oh, uh, so uh, Selty didn't get her resolution because uh, she, uh, she still doesn't like is her head is whatever and oh like we never hear from Shizuo's brother again and he just kind of disappeared after he he uh got rid of that car but um i i, I think like at the end like selty uh selty i felt felt really uh, i felt her character arc for that for that particular part of the series was over and she was able to relax and like they showed it in the in the finale by um, uh, her like dressing down a little bit and uh, like starting to relax because you know she's not like worried about like gang violence and she doesn't have to constantly be going to uh, jobs and such. So I think that kind of was the end of her character arc. And the main three definitely got their own character arc ended. I think Dodachin and his van gang got his uh, character arc ended and. Even though, like, uh, plot lines weren't resolved, I, as long as, to me, and I know this is not important to anybody else, but to me, as long as those character arcs were resolved, um, I felt okay with it. Because that was why I loved Dura Ra Ra. That, um, th like, those characters and that voice cast were just perfect. Like, I loved this dub so much. Like, Steve Bloom, Stephanie Shea. Uh, one more. Kerry Walgren. Everybody. Like, oh, Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch is fucking awesome in this. Um, everyone did a really, really good job. And so, like, because they did a good job, it made me like the characters more. And because I like the characters more, I like the series more. And because of that, I didn't feel cheated 
in the finale. So that's the reason why I like the finale was because even though it didn't solve plot lines, it solved character arcs. And that's the reason why I like it so much because I loved these characters so, so much. This is what pushed it over the edge for Bacchano, then Bacchano for me. And that's why I felt satisfied with the finale. And I do agree, yes, there were plot lines that were unresolved. But, you know, everybody wants second season. There's some room to do it there. And they could have done it here, but they decided to end it where they wanted it to end because, you know, they felt that it was the appropriate time to end it. And so, like... If they didn't, if they want to leave room open to do a like a like do Rava Ra the second raid or whatever, um, then uh, they can go off those plot lines. If they introduce something new, then I would be kind of against that. But you know, whatever. But if uh, if they do decide to do a second season, yes, then they can go off those plot lines that were unresolved, like Silty with her head, and so on and so forth. Like uh, Henri, like even go more into the backstory of Henri because Henri, Henri's backstory was kind of just shoved in there. I will agree with that, and uh, that wasn't resolved that well either. But um, her character arc as a completion did, so that's why I was satisfied with that. So I do think that a second season would be really beneficial to the show, but if it didn't happen. I would be okay with that. If it did happen, and what I just said, like, they decided to not go off any of the plot lines that were unresolved here, I would feel a little bit cheated, because, you know, you had this much material to work with, and yet you're going to do something new. It's like starting something and not finishing it, uh, even though you have the opportunity to. So, yeah. So, like, that's the reason that I liked uh, Do Ra 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 so much, and that's the reason I felt satisfied with the finale. And... Those are just my thoughts. I just wanted to get this down because I felt that um, it, it was, uh, you know, because I really, really like this show, and uh, I just wanted to record my first impressions and, like, get it out there to show uh, what I thought of the finale. And um, if you guys uh, have any other thoughts, you know, feel free to post them either when I post this on my anime list or on my blog or whatever, or on YouTube even. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys uh, like listening to me ramble for however many minutes. I can't tell right now. And um, I seriously can't remember uh, Black Hair Kid's name, main character. I seriously cannot remember his name. This is really bad this entire video I can't remember his name and I'm going to remember it and I'm probably gonna put it right here and I'm probably gonna say something about how I'm a fucking idiot exactly so um yeah so I can't remember his name right now but um I thought he was cool too so uh with all that said thanks you thank you for listening to me ramble and uh, if you guys have your own thoughts, post them in the comments uh, wherever you're seeing this. And uh, until next time, this has been Entertaining the Thought. I'll see you guys later.